Good morning. I'm Pastor Ashley Osborne, pastor at Valley of Peace Lutheran Church. Valley of Peace is located in Golden Valley, Minnesota, and today we are worshiping in our homes using Facebook Live. Valley of Peace is a ELCA congregation, as well as a Reconciling in Christ congregation. I see we have some folks joining in, so as you join in, feel free to say something in the comments or give a little wave so that we know you are here. Valley of Peace is a congregation that is very, very musically inclined and we love music. And so we're going to begin our time with music today. Zach Carlson, our director of music, will be posting a link to a hymn in the comments. I'll be playing about a minute of this link to give people a chance to catch up as they're tuning in and joining us this morning. If you want to listen to that full hymn, I invite you to do so after our time of worship. As I've said before, I'm Pastor Ashley Osborne, and welcome to Valley of Peace Lutheran Church on Facebook Live Worship. Valley of Peace is a reconciling in Christ congregation, which means we welcome and celebrate all, and all people are welcome to participate in our ministry and our life together. So I give thanks that you are joining us on Facebook Live this morning. Your presence enriches this time together, and we give thanks that God enriches all of our lives. We'll begin our time like we always do with some welcome and announcements. We are continuing in this time of self-quarantine and worshiping and connecting with one another from our homes. So I hope you are connected to our weekly e-news as well as emails from Sally. This provides updates of ways to continue to connect with us as well as our Valley of Peace Lutheran Church page. Today at 11, we have adult faith formation. Thank you to Bob Hoyt for leading that. Last night, we had a question or two and a brew. So thank you to Wes Severson for leading that. And we're going to continue that every Saturday night. So look for the link using Zoom below, or excuse me, on Facebook Live or in emails this week as well. We also um, want to update you that Valley of Peace Church Council is meeting Tuesday evening to look ahead to the month of April and what could we can expect in worship services to come. So look for information after that council meeting on Tuesday. And I want to also share that to follow today's service, if you want a draft of the bulletin, you can do so by going to valleyofpeace.org and right on the homepage, you'll see a link to click. That's a PDF, which includes the Confession of Forgiveness. It includes our Apostles' Creed and Lord's Prayer and just other information that maybe would make it helpful as you follow along today. So that's at our homepage. I also want to share that you know that as a congregation we hold one another in prayer so please know I continue to pray for all of you and I invite others to do so as well. One prayer request in particular is for Dean and Darlene Lamker. Darlene lost both of her parents this week. Her dad who was 97 passed away on Tuesday and her mom who was 94 passed away on Friday. So we hold Darlene and her family in prayer at this time. As we begin our time together, knowing that we're worshiping from home and not in our sanctuary, I'm going to invite you to create a space that feels like a sanctuary to you. So perhaps that could be finding a blanket to wrap around you as a reminder of God's love. Perhaps it's looking up a picture of the Valley of Peace Sanctuary and imagining ourselves worshiping there. For me, it's lighting a candle. So you can see I have a candle lit right here. And a new practice that we did this week as a family is we lit this candle every time we sat down for dinner together. And so it was a reminder of our time together as a community of faith. So if you light a candle, 
I invite you to light this candle several times during the week and think about our Valley of Peace community. Well, as we begin, let us begin with our confession and forgiveness. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us take a time of silence to confess our sins before God and before one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let us join together in prayer. O Lord, no one on earth knows the hour of your return. Only keep us watchful and awake, that we might always be at work in your kingdom for the sake of Jesus. Amen. Well, you may have noticed that I'm moving around in my house as we find places to worship. And today for our children's time for our object lesson, we have a little activity. So I'm gonna lift up the camera here and I want you to look at the objects on the table here. Oops, I gotta make sure I'm getting this correctly. And I'm going to switch some things out. So I want you to see, well actually I'm gonna cover up the camera, but I want you to take a look again and see what things are switched out and know that I'm going to be covering up the camera so I've not gone away, but I don't want any peeking. So I'm gonna switch out a couple objects and I want you to try and notice which ones are different. All right, here we go. Okay, I'm just switching out some stuff. Just give me a moment here. I am getting some things set. We're coming back. Let's see. Okay. Okay, here we go. All right, I am back. So let's see here if you've noticed anything that's switched out. Do you notice anything? If you notice anything different, you can put it in the comments and we'll see here. Pay close attention. All right, I'm gonna wait and see as we readjust. Anyone notice anything different? I'm waiting for some comments here, so I don't wanna give anything away, but one thing I'll point out is we have a different candle color here. So a little bit different candle color. We also have a different children's toy. Oh, yep, Arwen got it, and we have a different picture. We had a different picture before, so we changed that. And a different book, and actually even a different coffee mug. So, oh, I see that Bowden guessed it correctly. Everything is different except for this candle. So the candle is the only thing that stayed the same, the candle that we lit at the beginning of the service. And I did this on purpose because in the story we're going to read here soon from scripture, it's a reminder that when everything feels like it changes around us, God's love stays the same. So in our model today, everything changed, but the one thing that's consistent is God's love. And that's true for our lives as well. Amen. Well, let us continue our time together with scripture. So if you, you have your Bibles present, we're continuing in the Gospel of Mark. Today we're in Mark 13, verse 8, and then we'll pick up 24 through 37. Let us hear the word of our Lord. 
As Jesus came out of the temple, one of his disciples said to him, Look, teacher, what large stones and what large buildings. Then Jesus asked him, Do you see the great buildings? Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives opposite the temple, Peter, James, and John, and Andrew asked him privately, Tell us, when will this be and what will be accomplished? Then Jesus began to say to them, Beware that no one leads you astray. Many will come in my name and say, I am he, and they will lead many astray. When you hear of wars and rumors of wars, do not be alarmed. This must take place, but the end is still to come. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquake in various places. There will be famines. This is but the beginning of the birth pangs. As for yourselves, beware, for they will hand you over to councils, and you will be before governors and kings. But in those days, after the suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not be given its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in the clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send out the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. From the fig tree learn its lessons. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly, I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at the cock crow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. This is the word of the Lord. The people of God say, thanks be to God. Thanks be to God. And I'm reading from our NRSV translation, the translation that we always use as we read in scripture. Please join with me in a word of prayer. God, open us up to your word, your word which passes faithfully from our ears to our hearts and from our hearts to our lives. Amen. I'll be honest with you this morning and say that when I first read the text earlier this week and when I reread it today, I had tears in my eyes because as I imagine the disciples hearing Jesus talk about the temple being destroyed, buildings come crumbling down, the world as they know it shifting beneath their feet, it felt all too familiar. That for the disciples, I don't know how it is that they heard what Jesus was saying, but they had to have been thinking, the world is changing. The world is going to shift. And I think about this for us today as well as we live in this time of pandemic. The world as we know it has shifted. Our plans have been crumbling down. Our routines have been crumbling down. Things that we have known to be certain before have shifted and changed. We now have desks set up in our homes for work and for school. We have travel plans that have been canceled, that have been crumbling down around us. All of us have experienced the pain of this time, this time when it feels like the world as we know it is shifting beneath our feet. And though all of us have experienced the pain of this time, I think all of us would answer this question a little bit differently. What for you feels like it has come crumbling down? What for you feels like it has come crumbling down? Perhaps that is travel plans. Perhaps it's time with family, Sunday dinners gathered together. Perhaps it's the little drive in from to work as you have your morning ritual and your morning coffee and your routine. What feels like it's been crumbling down around you? What's interesting is when I think about this text, I'm reminded of how we've been studying the book of Lamentations as a congregation during this season of Lent. 
and that the first thing we talk about in the book of Lamentations is that the city has been destroyed. The city is crumbled down right in front of people. We compare this to a funeral, actually, that people are, of course, lamenting because they cannot deny the suffering that isn't before them. They cannot turn away from the pain of the buildings and their city being destroyed, which they see every single day. And yet, we talk about this as a funeral because there is a time for lament, and yet, I will tell you that some of my favorite sermons to preach are funeral sermons. Because even though each funeral is specific to the person whose life we are remembering and celebrating, we also end every funeral and every funeral sermon the same. That nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, not even death. Nothing can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, not even death. That we believe at the time of a funeral, we have to be honest about the pain and the suffering and the grief and the death that is right before us. But we also have to be honest about the new hope that has been offered to us through the promise and the life of Jesus Christ our Lord. This new hope which is pointed to in this text today, friends. Jesus talks about this is the, but the beginning of birth pangs. And we know, we know that after a birth, you hold a new life in your midst. And Jesus talks about how we take our lessons from the fig tree, that it branches new leaves, that there is new life in the nature around us. And even when Jesus is talking about keep awake, keep watch, Jesus mentions both the evening and the midnight and the dawn and when the cock crows and all of these point to the events that we will soon be hearing once again of Jesus' last supper, his betrayal, his trial, his execution, his death, and his resurrection. Even here when Jesus talks about keeping awake, I believe Jesus is calling us to keep awake for signs of life around us. That in the midst of plans shifting, in the midst of things crumbling down among us, in the midst of death itself, we believe in new life. So friends in Christ, join with me in looking for signs for this new life all around us. And join with me in having hope that even in this time, there will be new life to come, new life in ways we could never even imagine. Thanks be to God for the promises that sustain us today and every day. Amen. As we continue in our time of worship, we join together in confessing our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed, this faith that continues to point to new life. Please join with me if you are able. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our service continues with the prayers of the people. After each petition, I will say, Lord, in your mercy, and I invite you to say, hear our prayer. Let us join together as we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. In this time of COVID-19, God, we pray for the church and the good news that can continue to be proclaimed. God, as the church, when we aren't sure, help us. When information comes from all sides, correct and not, help us to discern. When fear makes it hard to breathe and anxiety seems to be the order of the day, Slow us down. Help us to reach out with our hearts when we can't touch with our hands. Help us to be socially connected when we have to be socially distant. Help us to love as perfectly as we can, knowing that perfect love casts out all fear. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we take our clues from nature to know what season it is. Even with some snow on the ground this morning, we know that the sunshine this week will melt that away. So may the light and peace of your sun melt away our fears, our worry, our sadness, as we bask in the promises that only you can offer. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Eternal God, amid all the turmoil and changes of the world, your love is steadfast and your strength never fails. In this time of uncertainty and trouble, be to us a sure guardian and rock. Guide the leaders of our nation with your wisdom. Comfort those in distress and grant us courage and hope to face the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For the doctors we pray, for the nurses we pray, for the technicians and the janitors and the aides and the caregivers we pray, for grocery store workers and those who deliver what we need we pray, for the researchers and theorists, for the epidemiologists and investigators, for those who are sick and for those who are grieving we pray. For all who are affected all around the world we pray for safety, for health, for wholeness. Lord in your mercy, hear our prayer. May we feed the hungry, give drink to those who are thirsty, clothe the naked, and house those without homes. May we walk with those who feel they are alone, and may we do all that we can to heal the sick and those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit. We pray especially for those we name either silently or out loud. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal God, your love is stronger than death and your passion more fierce than the grave. We rejoice in the lives of those whom you have drawn into your, into your eternal embrace. Keep us in joyful communion with them until we join the saints of every people and nation gathered before your throne in your ceaseless praise. We pray especially for the family of Dean and Darlene Lamker after the death of Darlene's parents. And we pray for those we name either silently or out loud at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, we give you thanks that you continue to move through your church. Draw the people of Valley of Peace into deeper relationships with one another in our community as we continue to make your love and your life known. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all for whom we pray this day and keep us alert to the ways you are working in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. This is a time where if we were gathered in person, we would pass our offering plates. And so I'd like to take a moment to pause and invite you to consider what kind of offering you can offer at this time. Knowing that God is the giver of all good things, think about what it is you can offer. For some, those have been people reaching out to me to say, I can help with any technical needs. For some, it's been saying we have food and supplies ready if anyone is in need. And for many, it's been continuing with your financial gifts. I know that we have many folks who have started to give online for the very first time, which we greatly appreciate. So thank you, thank you, thank you. I invite you to have electronic giving as an option, especially as we follow the stay at home executive order. To give electronically, you can go to the Valley of Peace website and on the right hand side, you'll see a give electronically option. Thank you for the gifts, amen. As we close our time together, I want to share the blessing of our Lord with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you God's everlasting and almighty peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. Amen. For our closing hymn, I'm going to play just a portion of a song that Beth Brandt recorded and Zach Carlson, our director of music, will post this online. Beth is our organist, pianist, accompanist at Valley of Peace. I invite you to listen to this link even more as we close our time out together. And for those who would like, we have First Communion class today at 1130 on Zoom. Reach out to Emily or I for the link. We also have adult faith formation happening at on Zoom, reach out for to me for the link as well, and that can also be found on this Facebook page.
join together in listening to a section of our closing hymn. I invite you to go online to listen to the rest. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Peace be with you all.